What up guys, T Tim from T Tim Designs and I'm kinda in the tutorial mood right now. Um I just made a tutorial a couple seconds ago on how to do these nice lines on the side of your graffiti text. Um what I'm gonna be showing you now is how to make these nice uh bevel and emboss. And if I have time I'll show you guys how to do these corners. So of course what you want to do is get out your YouTube template and go straight into your blending options on your boxes. Then the first thing you want to do is add a drop shadow. Put the spread to 7 and put the size to 2. Add a bevel and emboss. Put the depth all the way up. Put the size all the way down. And go down to your highlight mode and turn the opacity down to a nice size. I say about. Um, not, about 50 looks good. Then what you want to go to is a stroke. Add a stroke of one, and that's about it. Um, if you want, you can add a little gloss to it by creating a new layer. If this would hurry up, create a new layer. Grab your brush tool. Make sure your foreground color is set to white. Grab the fifth brush, which is the fuzzy brush, and turn the size about size. Ah, I can't even talk. Turn the size up to about. 1,242 and just go to the top and just press that one time and we'll just wait a second for that to show up because my computer is a little bit slow and there you go um, now what you want to do is hold control and go over to your channel sections or whatever um, your modules are named and go inside this little rectangle where the picture is and you'll see this little um, symbol pop up uh, hold control and then just click that and you'll see a thumbnail pop up what you want to go to now is, pre um, is press select inverse select delete and it'll get it perfectly inside that box and just turn the opacity down to a reasonable size. Uh, about 35 looks good, but I'll take it down a little bit more, about 26. Um, if you do not have select for some odd reason, I don't know why you want it. Um, you can just um, select that one more time. Control click inside there and right click and go to select inverse. Just another way to do it. And uh, control D to deselect that. And then control J to make another copy. Then switch to your move tool. Hold shift and then drag this down to the second one. And you can cut that off to where you want, depending on how it looks. Make another thumbnail. Select inverse. I gotta go back to the marquee tool. Select inverse. And then press delete. Wait for that load up, and you may have to grab your eraser tool and just erase that hard edge. Grab your hard brush and just go right across, and that looks about good. And I usually just fade out the bottoms because sometimes you see that hard edge right there. So grab the fifth brush, as you'll see me do a lot, and then just rub out the bottoms of it. And then just turn the opacity down lower on this one to about 15. And of course, make it a little bit cleaner. I'm trying to go through this quick so I have time to do the corners. But yeah, you can mess with that. And I'll just see how much time we have left. Alright. Uh, it'll probably be about 10 minutes tutorial. I'll show you how to do two sides because once you get the top two sides, uh, you just have to copy them to make the bottom ones. So I'm going to just switch the color of this real quick so you can see the effect a little bit more. Unlock this layer, just double click it twice. And if somebody comments saying they want this template, uh, I'll put it in the link in the description. But I'm sure everybody already has one, so you won't have to worry about that. And I'm going to just switch the color on this. You don't have to. I just want you guys to be able to see the whole effect. I'm going to turn this to about a green. Well, that's red, but whatever, we'll go with it. Alright, so go above your channel sections. 
and create a new layer. And now what you want to do is grab your pen tool. You want to zoom in just a little bit. And right around the corners, you want to make a line right in the middle of the corner. Well, not a line, but make a dot. Hold shift to get a straight line. Make another one about this far. I usually make mine a little bit shorter, so I'm going to just control Z. All right, so make it about here. And then you want to make a little um, diagonal line right here. Another straight one. Another straight one. Diagonal. And that one's a little too short, so you can just control Z to undo that. And this doesn't want to act right, so I'm going to just do it like this. Just make a line. You don't have to hold shift on that one. And then hold shift again. And you see you get the nice shape of it. And if you look at my other one, it looks a little weird um, compared to the other one. But this is a tutorial, so I want to just show you guys the effect. I'm um, just close that out. That's my sister. Um, so what you want to do is fill path. Make sure you fill the path to white so you can add any um, burn tool. We won't be doing this in this tutorial, but you can feel free to add that if you like. And then delete the path. And then select the layer. Um, you can always rename it if you like to. But for now, I'm just keep it like this. Add a drop shadow. And turn the spread to 15. And the size to about 18. So you get these nice uh, drop shadow at the edges. Add a bevel and emboss. Depth all the way up. Size all the way down. And you can mess with the highlight opacity. Just take it down just a little bit. And then add a gradient overlay. Then you want to switch the white color to a darker gray. As you'll see in a second. Something about right there. So you get that nice effect. Um, the color for that is 1010010. Set that last zero weird. And I said weird again, but whatever. Um, switch this to a nice angle. I'm actually going to make that color a little bit darker. Okay. And that looks about good. So find a nice angle. Um, 14 looks good, but you can mess around with it. I'm just put it back at 14. And you can add a stroke of black to it. Um, I usually have a gradient on, so um, a usually color to a fading black gradient, so you'll be able to see, um, you won't be able to see the edges so far, um, so that's why you add the stroke. And I'm just check to make sure this is above our channel sections, which it is. And I'm gonna just make the channel sections. Just... Never mind. All right. So now you get that good effect. And for some odd reason, it looks a little bit weird, so I'm going to add one more thing to it. Add size of 1. And for some reason, it's looking a little bit weird, but that's fine. So that's the main effect right there um, of the corners. And if you move this around. So you get those nice edges, and I was right. Um, move this above your gradient layer. Uh, that's why it looks so weird. And <laughs> you can uh, go back and adjust that uh, color because now it looks a little bit too dark. Um, you want it to match your background just a little bit more. So turn this light gray or well, lighter gray. Something about right there. And you can mess with the angle again. Um, 23 looks good. So just keep that. And of course now you see the corner fully. Um, what you want to do now is um, rename this to corner uh, left. And then on your keyboard press control J to duplicate the layer. You can also just um, right click duplicate layer. But I do this so I don't have to rename it unless I don't want to. So now what you want to do is control T on your second layer of the corner 
and flip horizontal hold shift and just drag this over so a good position about right there so it matches up with the corner and if you look at it you can see that this side looks better and this side looks lighter and that's just because we switched the side of the gradient so now what we're going to have to do is just switch it to another side so go back to your gradient and switch um, the angle to about the opposite side something over here and you see you get that nice effect I'm going to just mess with that just a little bit and I just set that one to 144 so you can copy that number and that looks pretty good um, from here you can merge these together but I usually don't because I usually add things to them later um, but for now I'm just merge these together um, hold shift to select your bottom layer and then control E and yeah so now what you want to do is control J and then control T and then just move these down to here and the color will come back and you see that looks pretty nice and you can also mess with the angles on the bottom one usually it comes back to normal but for some reason it looks a little bit weird maybe because we merged them together um, so feel free to go back and unmerge them but I kinda like the way that looks like that so I'm gonna just I'm gonna just keep it like that so yeah guys um, that's about it um, feel free to test that out as you can see it, um, it looks really nice a lot of people use this like people in abstract graffiti and uh, professional background designers so T-Tim from T-Tim Designs, I'm out and you guys have a nice day.